Through this morning, a Kalama woman charged with planning to murder her estranged husband and two other people. Cowlitz County deputies arrested 54 year old Don Rolf yesterday. Detectives say a witness came forward and told them Rolf had been watching the intended victims and she was looking for help killing them. Amid a celebration, people in Hood River are trying to wrap their heads around a horrible loss. A small plane crash on Friday killed two people there. Their deaths and the crash came right before the annual Hood River fly in. The festival is still happening, but the tone, of course, has changed. Here's KGW's Maggie Vespa. Today in Hood River, a flag flew at half staff and flowers lay at the base of the pole. This for two men killed yesterday when authorities say a 1974 Piper PA 18150 went down at the Hood River Airport. Sky 8 caught the scene from overhead. Witnesses said the plane was about 100 feet off the ground when they heard the engine sputter and it went into a steep dive. The NTSB and FAA are investigating. Fast forward 24 hours, the nearby Antique Airplane and Automobile Museum hosted its annual Hood River fly-in. Crowds and planes dotted the landscape. Memories of the two victims were front and center for many. I mean, he flew most of the aircraft that you see. Brian Heim took some time today to tell us about his friend. Ben Davidson was the passenger killed in that crash yesterday. He was 55 and from Hood River. Davidson loved aviation. This is a photo of him teaching people about the mechanics of a plane. Heim says this was one of Davidson's favorite events. For Heim, it's hard to believe he's gone. Ben was one of those guys that just really embodied aviation. Everything he did gave to the aviation community, the flying that he did, the support for the aircraft, everything that he did was just, it was from his heart. That was our Maggie Vespa reporting. We're seeing posts on social media of signs at Fred Meyer stores in the area. The stores say they're looking for replacement workers. You may have seen them because of a possible labor dispute with the local union. We asked Fred Meyer about these signs. They tell us they're looking for workers to keep their stores open in case of a strike. But the company says right now there may not be one. That echoes actually what the union tweeted. They say a strike is not imminent. In fact, the union says Fred Meyer has, quote, fabricated an imminent strike. A political debate is playing out in Providence Park. The Timbers played last night, but a few of their diehard fans were nowhere to be found. It's because Major League Soccer banned them over a symbol. KGW's Art Edwards has the story. Fans showed up early for the match with Sporting Kansas City. Inside Providence Park, the Timbers Army held its usual spot at one end of the stadium, fired up and cheering for the Timbers. One member of the Army wore the iron front while leading chants and also held a scarf that says against fascism. Members of the Timbers Army were banned for three games by the league after members of the Army defied recent warnings and flew banners with an iron front symbol during last week's match against Real Salt Lake. The Iron Front is banned under the league's policy against political signs, and it is associated with Antifa. One of those banned is Abraham Goldman Armstrong, the owner of Cider Riot. Fans of the game say they were disappointed in the move by MLS. I think it's a bad move by MLS, for sure. Um, I think a lot of soccer culture is grounded in uh, both things that are political, um, especially here in Portland, you know, people really care about that stuff, and I think it's kind of silly to say that I can't have a place at games. The Timbers Army has been vocal about the ban. They released a statement on their blog earlier this week. It says in part, we disagree with the league's stance, with its misapplication of the fan code of conduct, and with its failure to consult the human rights experts in the code's creation. Even supporters of Sporting Kansas City are surprised by the ban. Soccer culture certainly is grounded on people's beliefs and as far as I know about Portland, that's pretty surprising that they ban fans for just displaying what they believe in. So the Timbers Army and the Timbers front office have had discussions to help move forward together. Representatives of the Timbers Army also plan to meet with MLS leaders. We have a traffic alert for you now after a train derailed in North Portland yesterday. This happened near Going Street and Greeley Avenue. Peabot says two locomotives and three tank cars derailed and crashed into the column holding up an overpass, damaging it. Union Pacific says no one was hurt and none of the liquefied gas in the tanks leaked, fortunately. 
The road is closed from Interstate Avenue to Port Center Way on Swan Island while crews inspect that overpass. Meantime, you can use River Street as a detour to get to Swan Island. And police are still investigating a break in at Portland Mercado earlier this week. All of it caught on camera. Thieves smashed the front door and stole the cash box from a bakery inside. But the Mercado is bouncing back and hosted its yearly festival yesterday. They asked people to come out to the Taste of Latino America Festival to support them after the break in. The good news is the bakery that was targeted, it doesn't keep much cash in its box since they've learned their lesson because the Mercado has been hit before. Luckily, it wasn't a huge loss for the business, but it was, um, it is a big expense for us this close to our biggest event of the year, which is happening today, uh, to have to repair this door. The Mercado's director says they've ramped up security. He also says police told them break-ins, just like this one, are on the rise in the neighborhood, so people need to be extra vigilant. And if you didn't stay up late to watch the Beavers in Hawaii last night, well, you saved yourself a bit of a heartache if you are a Beavers fan. They never trailed in the game, at least until this field goal right here with just two minutes to go. Oregon State struggled in the second half, losing 31 to 28 on the road. They are now 0-2 on the season. OSU hosts Cal Poly next Saturday.